Black holes stand out as one of the most perplexing phenomena in space. Contrary to being tangible objects, they emerge from the profound distortion of space-time. This distortion leads to peculiar occurrences in their vicinity, challenging conventional notions of the universe's functioning. The extraordinary nature of these phenomena might seem implausible without the robust mathematical foundation supporting their existence and characteristics. Furthermore, mounting observational evidence in our own universe reinforces the accuracy of the mathematical models describing black holes. In this series we will be exploring the unexplorable. Join me on this journey as we attempt to understand the weird science of how a black hole forms, what goes on around it. Explore what might actually allow for an escape from the most inescapable prisons in existence. I hope by the end of this video to have earned your like and subscription. What are black holes? Black holes come in a variety of sizes. The smallest observed black hole is around 3.8 solar masses. On the other side of the scale, we find black holes that have been in existence since almost the start of the universe. Black holes weighing billions of solar masses. These behemoths are not only massive, but also huge. They would easily fit in the entire solar system within the diameter of their event horizon. Black holes being created today are the final stage in the life cycles of particularly massive stars. When such a star is born, it is essentially balancing under the weight of two forces. The first is gravity, pushing its mass towards its center down in the depths of the star. Hydrogen atoms are crushed against other hydrogen atoms with such force that they combine to form a denser element, helium. This new atomic structure actually needs less energy than it did when it was two individual, separate hydrogen atoms, so the extra energy left over gets released. This released energy is the second force. It radiates back out from the center of the star as heat and light, counteracting the force of gravity pushing in. In this state, the star will remain relatively stable until such time as the reaction begins to stop as it runs out of its hydrogen fuel. If the star is massive enough, once the hydrogen begins to run low, the star will combine the newly formed helium into even denser materials, like carbon, neon, and eventually oxygen and silicon. But then it begins fusing iron. The issue with iron is that it doesn't save any energy in its new form, so has no spare energy to release. It just sits in the core of the star, growing larger. With no energy pushing back against gravity, very quickly, the scale tips. The energy of this collapse is astounding but the force is dependent on the original mass of the star. Like a hammer striking on an anvil, the mass of the star rushes down to meet the core with such force that the rebound of that blow is what we call a supernova. Matter and energy are blasted out across the universe from the crack back, in one of the largest explosions possible, which produces elements even heavier than iron, all the way up to uranium. And what is left of the star? Well, it depends. If the mass of the star and thus the force of the blow was too low, what remains is a neutron star a small ball of matter at most around 25 kilometers in diameter, and yet so densely packed with mass that it equals a million Earths. But if the mass and thus force was big enough, physics as we know it breaks down, and we are left with a black hole. When you see an image of a black hole, the black sphere you are looking at is not actually the black hole itself. Scientists theorize a black hole's true form is probably even smaller and denser than a neutron star. In fact, it is likely infinitely small and infinitely dense, a singularity emitting forces that warp time and space itself. However, we don't know. And the reason we don't know is because of something called the event horizon. All objects with mass exert gravity. We've known this since the days of Newton. However, when Einstein came along in 1915 with his theory of general relativity, a contemporary of his called Karl Schwarzschild reasoned from it that there could exist objects that were so massive. They could create enough gravity that light itself could not escape. And if even massless light photons couldn't get out, nothing could. When you look at a picture of a black hole, you are not seeing the black hole itself. You see, according to Einstein, space and time are inseparably connected, and mass warps space-time. Within the event horizon, space and time basically cease to exist, a place where there is no where or when. This produces an interesting phenomenon to an outside observer watching matter fall into a black hole. When first theorized, astronomers and physicists were uncertain if black holes were actually real. It was only 40 years later that the first evidence of a black hole was recorded. In 1964, using newly developed X-ray satellites, scientists noticed an object in the constellation Cygnus that seemed to be emitting a large amount of X-rays. Strangely enough, though, scientists could not see the object itself. Scientists called this object Cygnus X-1. In 1970, as telescopes advanced, 
They noticed that whatever Cygnus X-1 was, it had formed a binary orbit with a star in its system. And this helped scientists calculate its mass. They discovered that this invisible object was 15 times more massive than the Sun. As the densest neutron star had an upper limit of three times the mass of the Sun, scientists realized that this was most likely the first ever discovered black hole. This is how black holes can still be detected through X-rays. While black holes can't emit visible electromagnetic radiation themselves, the X-rays that come from them actually originate from their accretion disks, where infalling matter gets heated to millions of degrees Celsius through intense friction. Black holes with no infalling matter are basically invisible, with no bright accretion disk to spot. Exploring black holes is still a developing field in physics, and there is still much to learn. From just what we've learned so far, you may wonder if a black hole could ever stop being a black hole, or will it grow forever? Until there is no matter or radiation left in the universe? It would seem so. However, in 1974 in his paper entitled, Black Hole Explosions, physicist Stephen Hawking, postulated that there actually was a way that energy, and thus mass, could leave a black hole. But to understand why, we have to get into some extremely weird theory. We need to examine some principles of quantum mechanics. But first, let me ask you a difficult question. What is, nothing? Quantum fields. Imagine for a second a patch of space with nothing inside of it. It has no atoms of space dust. Not even radiation passing through it. As near as can be seen, nothing exists within it. And yet, is there really truly nothing here? Well, no. Something fundamental exists here. And we can tell that this is the case when a beam of light travels through it. If you are familiar with the properties of light you will know that light is actually waves of electrical and magnetic charge that are constantly propagating each other forwards in a straight line. However, let's take a look at that word wave. A wave in the sea is the propagation of energy moving through the water. If you were to look at an individual particle of water, it's not really going anywhere except in a circle, and yet because it passes energy to the atoms next to it. Energy travels towards the shore in a constant motion that goes all the way to the beach. Similarly, a sound wave moves by passing energy between air particles, with each particle only moving a tiny bit, becoming energized and then passing that energy to the next particle in line. But in our vacuum of space, where there is nothing in it, where our photon of light is traveling in waves, have you ever stopped to wonder what exactly is waving? This hints at a fundamental something that exists even in nothing. A fabric that makes up all of reality itself. Quantum physicists call this something the quantum field. Quantum fields are tough to wrap your head around, but they are inescapably important when it comes to understanding the end fate of a black hole. And this is something I hope you'll join me in the next episode for, where I will explore this in depth and hopefully in a way that doesn't require a major in astrophysics. But for now, let's look at science a little closer to home. Thanks for watching. Want to know more about the most active black holes in existence? All the best, and see you next time.